Hello! Happy Feeling Fab Friday, everybody. Amanda Lee coming to you live on this fabulous Friday to talk all about the adrenals. So I did a poll on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, people on Facebook, you're missing out because I post all sorts of cool, fun facts and info, polls, questions, la, 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 la. It's great. So you should come on over to Instagram at Sozo Method. Follow me there for all my Instagram peeps. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today we're gonna talk about adrenal health and I'm probably gonna talk about a facet of it that's a little different than anything you've ever really heard about before. And you know, you know me, you've been following me for all. You know, I'm a mineral nerd, I'm obsessed with minerals, I'm obsessed with uh, their function in the body and really how that plays a role in all of your other health stuff and I'm really a huge fan of it and I've seen the difference in my own life from implementing mineral protocols even during times of intense acute stress and the difference that it's made in my body and I'm passionate about educating people about minerals and copper toxicity and heavy metal toxicity and how that affects your overall health and really getting to the root of the problem. So a lot of times, you know, we, we talk about adrenals, we talk about adrenal fatigue. I'm sure you've heard that term before. Um, you know, you, you do a lot of work around supporting the adrenals, but we're not looking a little bit deeper at one of the main causes of why we have adrenal issues to begin with, and that is copper toxicity. So if you missed my mineral magic and minerals webinar, please direct message me. I will send you the link for the replay. You can watch it. And I go into this more in depth of copper toxicity. I'm not going to talk about how the copper toxicity starts or any of that because I really did clear that up on my web webinar. I'm going to just talk about its effect on the adrenals today. So we need copper to really assist us with energy production. Okay. It's very important. But as copper begins to build up in the body, it kind of has like a gas pedal effect on the adrenals where it just starts pushing on those adrenals like asking for gas. And at first, this gives you like a sense of increasing energy at first, like woohoo, I gotta get stuff done. Um, and you probably begin to take on more and more because you think you can. And as you do that, it begins to wear you out in your adrenal function over time. And eventually, as some of you know, um, fatigue and exhaustion can set in. Now, the adrenals are never meant to stop functioning. Okay, so adrenal fatigue is kind of like a false statement because adrenals don't give out like our ovaries do as we get older. They just get taxed and you definitely can have a dysregulation between your HPA access. But um, as this happens initially, aldosterone is the hormone that is increased, you know, from the adrenals is increased and it enhances that brain activity. And so that can lead you to really have that racing mind sort of symptom as copper begins to accumulate and that gas pedal is being pumped and that aldosterone is being shot up. Um, so like I said, um, you know, in the beginning it might feel like you could do anything. You're like superwoman or superman. You're like, bring on the tasks. And, um, you know, you begin to do those things. But as the copper accumulates, it's an internal uh, source of constant stress on your body. Okay. So, um, which takes a toll, just like any form of stress, wherever we're getting stress from, you know, there's different kinds of stress. There's emotional stress, there's chemical stress, physical stress, uh, all those things. And this is one of those stressors inside the body that the body just keeps pumping those adrenals. So when that's happening under stress from any source of the ones I just mentioned, you lose zinc and magnesium, which are those really calming minerals. And as that happens, the pumping of the adrenals also boosts up that sodium level, okay? Because sodium and aldosterone are very much connected. So I'll often see people who have low levels of calcium, magnesium, and uh, losing zinc rapidly, but their sodium is off the charts. And the reason why is because they've got that relationship going on uh, with copper. So this uh, shooting up of sodium really causes a lot of like um, short fuse reactions, okay? So in times of stress, you might just be more reactive. And I really want to hammer home here the connection between the emotions and minerals. So some of us think, uh, you know, this is all in my head. It's not all in your head. It's literally happening in your body and there's definitely emotional support we need to do, but we also need to address these physical issues that are happening. So as zinc starts to, you know, get pushed out and go lower and lower, copper begins to accumulate further and further. 
And um, eventually, you know, the body can't really respond to stress anymore. And if the body is unable to properly eliminate that copper, and there's reasons for that, and I've talked about slow oxidation before, and the, you know, not having good bile flow, not having good levels of zinc, all those things, um, as long as the exposure to the copper continues, it will continue to accumulate and continue to really wreak havoc on those adrenals. And eventually it'll cause the sodium and aldosterone and all that to crash and not be able to be produced anymore. And at this point, you really just feel exhausted. And as this happens, as the adrenals start, stop being able to work as much, the liver is not able to produce something called ceruloplasm. And ceruloplasm is needed to make copper bioavailable to the body. Okay, so we need copper for energy, it's really important. So like I've said before, you can have a combination of copper uh, over copper, copper toxicity, ex excess copper, bioavailable copper, and you know not have enough copper available to you at the same time. And so that copper that is not carried into the cell by the ceruloplasm from the liver because of the tax on the adrenals, it begins to accumulate. And it accumulates first at the liver and keeping the liver from doing its job, which the liver has a huge job, and then secondary, it's stored at the brain. I've talked before about the association between copper and estrogen, and they both are retained in the body at the same time. So if you've got excess estrogen issues, you might wanna look into copper toxicity. But more than that, it doesn't allow the liver to really function and work through the, the three phases of estrogen detox. So this is a problem. Um, and then in the brain, we start to have really a lot of issues with mental health um, from copper in the brain. Uh, you can see a lot of children who have ADHD problems and all that stuff, anxiety, depression associated with copper toxicity. So um, I just explained a little bit about how the copper affects the adrenals and um, really, this really begins to give you symptom, symptoms of dehabilitating fatigue, uh, you know, exhaustion, resentment, withdrawal, loss of libido happens, um, depression, insomnia, frustration, really a loss of interest in relationships, moodiness, irritability, all this stuff can happen. And um, this can really affect your ability to show up in relationships, to show up as a parent, to show up as a partner. And like I said, the, the effect that it has on that ceruloplasm. And ceruloplasm is a glycoprotein, okay? And this is produced in the liver. And like I said, it's really responsible for transporting 95% of copper into the blood plasma. So as the adrenals speed up, ceruloplasm production is fine in the beginning of this copper toxicity, but because um, the adrenals help the body produce it, but when everything crashes after a while, this changes and all the, the adequate ceruloplasm levels that were available before become deficient. And so um, even though you can have a lot of copper in your body, it's just not being carried into the blood plasma, like I said. And um, this really causes a lot of burden on the liver, like I said, a, a burden on the ad adrenals. And your energy can also take a huge hit from this because copper is really important for that. Um, copper, uh, it helps the electron transport. This is a lot of science, I know that. Help the electron transport into the mitochondria. And in this exhaustion state, like I said, copper is not being used and it's not being eliminated. And so it's stored in the tissues. And um, this can heighten PMS symptoms, like I said, because of the estrogen relationship insomnia, headache, joint pain, skin rashes, anxiety, panic attacks, paranoia, depression, all that stuff. So copper toxicity really reduces the ability for you to cope normally with stress and having that ability to respond adequately. And that can really wreak havoc on your relationships. It can really induce fearful emotions, anxiety, panic. And um, the reason why this matters is because, you know, it really does affect the ability for you to show up regular in life, to be able to handle conflict, to be able to respond well to your partner, to your children, and those feelings of anxiety, depression, exhaustion um, really take over. And that's when a lot of shame can, tre can creep in. And, um, you know, you really have a lack of awareness of what your feelings really are. And uh, this is something that I'm really passionate about explaining to people because they don't really understand 
the relationship and oftentimes we're just focused on, oh, how do I help my adrenals? Well, you can give yourself all, all sorts of stuff for the adrenals, but if you don't find the root of the issue, majority of time for women it is copper toxicity, you're gonna continue to struggle and it's just gonna continue to tax things going on in your body. So that copper also pushes out that calcium into the soft tissue, causing issues um, with the calcium shell. It also affects uh, so many other things in the body. And I really want people to get this understanding of how important it is. So I've, I, as I mentioned before, you can't just detox copper. It's not something that happens quickly. It's something that can happen over years of time and really important to balance the macro minerals first to assist the body so that it's at the point where it can carry the copper out of the body and your bioflow, all that. Okay, so if you do things too quickly and certain things can really cause that copper dump and the solution is not taking zinc, um, it's really uh, balancing the body because if you put a bunch of zinc, I, I recommend my clients not to take more than 15 milligrams of zinc. If you put a bunch of zinc into the body, it's gonna push that copper out. If the body can't carry the copper out, now it's just really stirring it up. Think of like when you like clap uh, pillows together and the dust like goes everywhere, except there's nothing to like grab the dust and carry it out. So it's just really stirring it up. It's not really doing anything good and it can really cause a lot of symptoms to intensify and worsen and people can be afraid of that because it can feel scary and weird and do weird stuff to your body. So we have to start slow and everyone's individual. Some people do really well with supplementation and helping the body and they can start to move forward faster. Other people need to start with foods and, and changing what they eat to increase the, food, the minerals that they need to balance out that metabolism. And so this is the key to your adrenal health, okay, is to, to get to the root of the problem of what's causing your adrenal issues in the first place. And um, it's not just by putting band-aids on it. And obviously dealing with emotions and stress is important. And so learning how to really handle those emotions that come up. But um, I really teach my clients to sit with their emotions and we do clearing calls that allow them to really open that space available for their emotions because we're doing so much in the body at the same time, okay? We, we're, we're stirring up copper and we're trying to detox and it can really create a lot of different emotions. And if you don't have a container for that, emotional constipation is just as bad as physical constipation, okay? So I deal with two kinds of constipation. I don't want my clients constipated in any way and I have to help them with that. So it would be a disservice to you just to address the copper toxicity and just to address hair mineral analysis and just to address uh, GI maps and all that without giving you an opportunity to really kind of sit with those emotions, process them and learning how to really self-regulate through all of that. So I really believe that's why the SOZO method is a combination of the physical and the emotional. This is the key to your freedom. And this is a process, it takes time, it's not a fast fix. Okay, you could be have been accumulating copper for years from birth in utero. So it's not going to be something that we get through really fast. But it doesn't mean you're going to have to feel bad the entire time we're working together. So I just wanted to share this about adrenal health today. I think it's important to understand a little bit more in depth to what may be going on instead of just kind of trying to put band-aids on the adrenal issues but to understand what may be pushing that gas on the adrenal. So there is emotional stress that can contribute, but there also is this physical stress from copper that can really exasperate the problem and lead to a lot of other issues. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have a feeling fab Friday. If you have any questions with me, if you'd like to get on the phone with me and talk about whether my program is a good fit for you, whether working with me is a good fit. I don't say yes to everybody because honestly, I want people who are ready to do this work but also want to do the emotional component as well. And we jive together and there's lots of amazing practitioners out there and I might not be the right one for you. But if you resonate with what I'm saying, you wanna go a little deeper, you wanna look at your copper. If you've been on birth control pills for any period of time, you probably have copper toxicity. Um, there's lots of other ways you can get it. I'd love to talk with you. You can go to www, or I don't think you need a www anymore. My boyfriend tells me that because he's like my tech guy who's super cool. He's like, you don't need a www. Just sozomethod.com slash call. That's the link he set up. sozomethod.com slash call. You go there, you can book a call with me, we can get on the phone, and we can talk about how I can help you individually and what I offer. So if that's of interest to you, take advantage of it. 
I hope you have an amazing Friday. Don't be discouraged. There's always answers as to what's going on in your body. And if you're somewhere where you don't feel like you're getting the answers, then you need to try something different. So I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next week for Feeling Fab Friday. DM me uh, on Instagram with any questions. You can also send me a message on Facebook. And again, if you wanna watch the Magic of Minerals webinar where I have a whole flow chart of copper and all that jazz, let me know and I'll send you the replay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.